after three nights of staying in Singapore, I had planned on leaving and heading off to Malaysia until about half an hour ago, where I just changed my mind at the last minute and went, I'm staying. I had looked at accommodation in the next place. I looked at transport. I felt that because I've been around all the touristy places, all the cultural sites, the colonial places, that I hadn't really seen much of the real Singapore. And so I've decided that I am uh, gonna stay for one more day. Now, this hostel that I've been staying in for the last three nights, the Beat Sports Hostel is fully booked. They've just had a, an onslaught of people who have just turned up with all their bags. And then I thought, shall I stay, shall I go? I looked at uh, various booking sites and I have found a cheap hostel. Now, a lot of people who have been to Singapore will say it's very expensive, but you can do it on a budget. So even though that place is 15 pound a night, which is cheap for Singapore, the next place, which is only about a K down the road, is 11 pound a night. Oh my God. So I did check out uh, of the hostel about uh, two hours ago. I have been working on YouTube just to keep in the air con. Um, and I'm hungry. Now, as I found out since I've been here, there are various food courts around Singapore called Hawker Centers. And this is where I have been eating for most of the time. I'm going to try and find the place I've been going to. I'm going to walk around. I made the mistake on day one of actually going to a recommended cheap um, cafe, which was just down here, which turned out to be not so cheap, which is why I've been eating here. And these are dotted all over uh, Singapore. And basically, it's just a food court with various uh, little cafes that you just go up to. And I'm going to go up to the one that I went to yesterday. Um, bit of pork. God, why do I always trip? I just realized that while I was standing there just looking at the menu, the place is actually closed. So I can't have what I want from that menu. So I've come next door and I'm getting pork rib noodles. Uh, again, $5. All freshly made. So while I wait my food, what am I going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon? Because it is coming up to two o'clock. So the plan is I am not going to try and do touristy stuff. I'm going to go off the beaten track within Singapore. There is so much to see, not just the touristy places. Um, so this is my meal for five dollars. Cheap as chips. Uh, there's a soup, uh, noodles, and it looks really, really good. So I'm going to have this now and enjoy it. Oh, that was so good. And I think I've done every single one of these um, little food courts here, apart from the seafood. I'm not a big fan of seafood. So that's me now leaving. And it's only a kilometre down this way. Now I'm being conscious of the time, it's half past two in the afternoon. I am wanting to go out and about to see the hidden gems of Singapore. So I've now checked in. This is my room. And from this fair, I think I'm the only one here. There is no other person bags. Mind you, there's a lock on that. Oh, there's somebody's stuff down there. 
Oh well. Eleven pound a night. It's uh, it's perfect. Aircon. Who can complain? And then one bathroom to share between all of us. Uh, you get for you get what you pay for, and I'm happy with this. Seeing as it's not meant to be in Singapore, this is a last minute dot com thing. But we, but I'm now going to go out, and I'm going to go and see stuff. Do you want to come with us? Let's go. I'm here at the first stop, and this is Hall Park Villa, and this is so easy to get to. There is uh, an MRT just around the corner. Just take me about half an hour to get here, um, and this place was built by the Orr Brothers in 1937 now the all brothers were the founders of tiger bomb and this place is just full of chinese statues wow now obviously i've done no research at all because of the fact i didn't know i was going to be here today And this park contains over 1,000 statues. Oh, wow. And they're mostly all depicting scenes from Chinese literature, folklore, legend, and history. Culture courtyard. Wow. And there's lots of them that I don't quite understand. Duck hens. No, I've no idea how big this place is. I've not got a map, but it looks big. And there's just so much to see. Monkeys. I want to go see the monkeys. Now this is as far as you can get. Up. Now this is a long way from the marina. But all the tourists are. Oh my god. Look at that. Koala bears. Can't get can't get rid of this scarf on. <sighs> love a love a monkey scene. Oh wow, as you do go around you'll get various information about what the, the dioramas are, the legends, the histories, and I would love to show you all of them but we could be here for a long time, ah mate, so that's the Tang Dynasty Buddha. Needs a shave. When I read about this and it said park, I just assumed there'd be one or two statues, but was not expecting this. Oh, fish man. 
everywhere you look, there is some fascinating structures. Beautiful. This looks just like a lake or a river. Just goes around. This is the pond of legacy. And I only know that because I just passed the sign that said so. Oh, Mr. Crab. Wow. This is fascinating. Well, I was looks happy. Wow. This place is amazing. Now, so far, I've been here for about half an hour, just walking around, reading everything. Um, really fascinating. And then you've got the stairs going down to a lake. But I think this is my time to leave. This was just a short video for you. Now, if you're from Singapore, this will be well known to you. If you're from outside of Singapore, this is less well known. But if you're coming to Singapore, it's worth coming to. I'm at the next spot and it's the next day. By the time I got uh, out of that amazing park and I got to the next stop, it was starting to get dark. So I just went, I'll just do it all again. Which means I've had to extend another day, another night in, in Singapore. So, and you'll probably think, is he wearing the same top as yesterday? Well, yeah, laundry is expensive. So I'll try and make my stuff last uh, one or two days. But with this heat at the moment, it's hot. Now, where am I? I'm in a lovely little park. And there's a bit of European history in Singapore. And this is it. This is remains of the Berlin Wall when it fell in 1989. So why is it here? So this was given as a gift from Germany to the Singapore government in 2015 to mark 50 years of diplomatic relations between Singapore and Germany. So I'm going to have a walk around. Now, I have read that there's a lot of people from Singapore don't even know about this, um, which is why I've taken the 20-minute walk to get here. Uh, it's fascinating to know that this was part of the Germany divide between West Germany and East Germany, and it's right here in Singapore. Now, these are, these two bits of wall, are on loan to the Singapore University, which is just over here. So I just walked all the way through the university to get here. Um, lots of people looking at me going, he's a bit old to be in university. Yeah. <laughs> But I really, really want to see this. Now, if you are coming to Singapore or you're in Singapore and you want to know where this is, just go on Google Maps and search Berlin Wall. I'll tell you. Now, there is two sites on uh, Google Maps and organic maps that I use. And you've got the old site where they used to be. And then there's this site. And I think it's called Berlin Wall Fragments. Fascinating. What does get me is that as part of a major European 80s history monument, fragment, there's no science at all around here to say that it's... to say that it's here. Even coming up the road, and that is the university just there, and nothing indicating a bit about Berlin Wall history is here. But I've 
But it's time to go to the next spot, which is something I found last night. And I'm going to try and find it now. I'm on my way to the MRT, to the next spot. But I've just followed this path all the way down from a gate that was open. And I'm just following the map to get to the MRT. And the path itself is well worn. It's a couple of decades old. The grass around me has not been cut for a couple of months. But this is heaven. There's a lily pond over there. There is nobody at all in this little area. There's a little hut there that I've just been sat down there in the shade. It's clean. You can hear a bit of traffic in the, the background, but there's butterflies, there's birds, there's nature. This is beautiful. But you've got high rise buildings there. That there is part of the university. And you can hear the birds, you can you can't hear anything. I've heard a police siren about five minutes ago in the distance. And I bet not a lot of uh, people who live here know about this place. And people ask me why I walk everywhere. Because you'd miss out on this. Because I was going to get, try and find a bus to get to the uh, MRT station, but I thought, no, no, it's only a 25 minute walk. I'm sure there'll be plenty to see. And there's this. I've actually found out what this place is. It's a UAFA, unmanned flight aircraft flying area so you can with your drones down here get some peace and quiet bring a picnic and it's been easier to come in than it is to find a way out because there's a lot of gates closed trying to get in so you're trying to get out but I'm hoping this is the way out. Because it's a little bit warm. So I'm at the next spot. I've travelled down by the metro to this place. And this is Gilman Barracks. It's an old British Army barracks and that's been transformed into a arts museum. So I've read about this. So I'm going to have a wander down and have a look. From the entrance, just over there, it's a bit of a walk to get here. <laughs> when you see the signs for Gilman Barracks, you assume that, oh, you're here. So a bit of history about Gilman Barracks. Built in 1935 for the British Army and this area at the time was all swamp land. When it was built, it could accommodate 900 men. It was named after Sir Webb Gilman, we actually came to Singapore very briefly in 1927 just to check out on military barracks that could be built. And this is it. Wow. And all the way around you have got little signs to tell you about the history. And over the years there have been so many British units based here. And, oh, it's a bit warm. And then during the the British military withdrawal from Singapore and they sold it to the Singapore government for one Singapore dollar bargain. So then the Singapore Armed Forces moved in and then in the 1990s they moved out and then they turned it into the start of an art centre. So I'm assuming these are the original buildings and having been in the military myself, been in some hot places. Yep, this looks like original buildings. 
that looks like what would have been the main headquarters up there. Big old place. That would have been the cookhouse. I'm only guessing, but it looked like a cookhouse to me. So I have found a map giving you a rough idea where everything is. And then, yeah, Singapore's premier visual art precinct, each block has got a certain thing to do but there's a timetable of what's going to be doing in the next oh it's just a daily one wow there's a lot happening around here now i can assume that this place gets so busy on weekends on the night time but at the moment, there's not a lot of people around here. But I did want to come here because of my uh, ex-military background. As soon as I saw the word barracks, I went, I need to have a look at this place. Oh. So Gilman Barracks is down that way. I'm out of breath. And basically I've just come behind Gilman Barracks and I found a forest walk. It's actually labelled. So I've climbed all these stairs, climb, climb all the way up here. Nearly as tall as them buildings up there. So these stairs, I said behind Gilman Bar Barracks. There's two trails you can do. This is the forest trail which I assume takes you through the forest. And then down here is uh, exit to the earth trail. So this must be a, a little insight into a, a forest area up high. And you can hear the birds. There's no traffic. Wow. And then, yeah, you can see down there there's the Earth Trial. Now I'm not going to do this mainly because of the fact I've still got so much to see. I try to force it all in. One day. Oh, there's two ways. So that's the way through the jungle. Well, that way. Ah. So that way. Oh, that was, that takes me to the road, and that's where I want to go. This is amazing. Considering that I've been in sort of concrete jungle, even though it's nice to come out here, and it's not on the tourist maps. I actually found this by mistake. It's days like this when I've got my traveling head on, and my exploring head on, that I will go out and go, what's over there? What's over there? Let's go, let's walk. Which is how I found this place. But I am the only person around here. It's just so quiet. And that looks like a bit of shade. So I might just sit there and the reason I'm going to the main road is because I know there's a 7-Eleven shop and I'm very thirsty. I really can't get over how green this place is. This is beautiful. So I found out the name of the place. It's the, uh, the Telok Bolanga Hill Park. If you ever come to Singapore, you need to come, as I said, somewhere down there, a 10 kilometer trail. So if you're in, you're running. It's a lot of shade in there, so it's perfect. All right, let's try and find a 7-Eleven. 
it's that way. If you have been following me for the last few months, you'll know that I like quirky, offbeat, strange things. Um, and I found this online last night and I thought, oh, let's go and have a look at it. And it is Singapore's highest pedestrian bridge. This is the Henderson Bridge. And I didn't realize how high it would be. I actually thought I'd come down and have a, a walk along, but I just try to find the entrance to it. It links two parks. And the other reason I did come down here was because this is uh, the residential area within Singapore, although there's lots of them. This is like off the tourist map where the normals live, the non-holiday makers. Now, I could have walked all the way from the, the jungle trail, the earth trail, through to this park and through onto the bridge itself. But because I had to go via 7-Eleven to get a drink, I just took the, the metro. Now, I've had another look on the map and it's telling me there is an entrance up here. I am tempted to climb up if there is some stairs to go up there and uh, see what the view's like from up there. I've just asked someone how to get up there and they just went, oh, it's up here, there's a, there's a path. But my God, that's high. Wow. And I have found the path. It's this way. It's all uphill. It's good for, my, good for my fitness. Now, I've called it Henderson Bridge, but its actual title is Henderson Waves. That's because on a night time, there's LED lights in the bridge that I've read that gives the effect of a wave. Who needs a gym when you can be a backpacker just going out? Oh. Oh. That was hard. Enjoy that. And this is Henderson Waves. This is the bridge with, this is only the start of it. The view from up here. And what I want to do is have a, I want to just down to the road, down that way and see the view. But I've just seen this map, which you saw in the last park, but then, so you, this is part of the southern ridges, a lot of green spaces, and it tells you a lot of the areas that you can go to. Um, there's a forest walk, which I was on earlier. So, wow, lots of stuff if you're in your hiking. Just make sure you wear the right shoes, which I am wearing today. Wear my, my trainers and not my flip-flops, which I nearly wore first thing. Good job I didn't. Now there's a strong smell of workmanship, uh, oil. So I don't know if they're just trying to repair all, yeah some repair work going on down there. Paint, that's what I can smell. So basically this, within the southern range, links one park to the park behind us. Oh. I'm looking forward to a nice view. Oh God, that must be a hard job. Right. Thing is, once it's finished drying, then it'll be time to start painting again. Right. It's a dangerous job doing this painting. Wow. This is something that is not on the tourist map that I've never seen looking for things to do. 
So how do I find these places? It's easy. All you've got to do is Google off the beaten track, Singapore, obscure stuff to see, Singapore. Um, and this is the view. Let's go up both sides. Wow. The green jungle and the concrete jungle. And then on this side, lean towards the ocean. And there's the road. Amazing. I mean, my, my thighs are sore. <laughs> I've done a lot of uh, climbing up hills and, and steeps. Is that a seat down there? Yeah, it's a seat. I'm just going to take a five minute sit down. Obviously, once you sit down, you can't see any of the view. I wonder if you can wave to the uh, drivers. Hello. As I was sitting down, there's a sign that tells you everything you can see from the bridge. And then you've got uh, the Danish Siemens Church, reflections at Capital Bay, which is then things there. Get closer up. Very unusual. And then from there, in the background, you've got the Southern Islands and then the business city over there. So that was Henderson's Wave. And I have one more stop to go. The sun is starting to come down. Um, I might just stop off at the harbour for a quick copper before I go on my way, just to get some aircon and cool down. And then the last spot, which is random and obscure. So I have been down to the harbour front and I've had a coffee. My coffee levels have been raised up and I've been able to buy a coffee thanks to a donation on my Buy Me A Coffee donation page, which was donated by Anony Mouse. Love your name. Thank you very much. It got me a cappuccino. But I'm now in the last spot. And when I say I like random obscure things, this is it. Just off the main road, there is a quiet and assuming place, which is a Chinese graveyard. And one of the bodies that is buried here is Tan Tok Seng. This guy was uh, a Chinese entrepreneur, philanthropist, who started the very first free hospital in Singapore for the poor back in 1844. And the hospital, the Tan Tok Seng Hospital, still goes today. Now, this place looks like it's not being looked after at all, especially for someone so prominent like him and when you do look around and i've just had a quick look because i just needed to make sure i was in the right place but the map's telling me i am in the right place someone's been lighting stuff candles in relation to this and there is a little signpost just to tell you that this is the resting place of madame chua sia neo and Madame Wong Neo, who both passed on in this year, 1882. So I assume this is more people that have been buried here. It looks like it's been a fire down there. Hmm. Very unassuming. People probably don't know about this place. And yeah, I'm hoping I've got the right place. But maps never lie.
with this Tan Tuk Seng chappy, born in 1798 in Malacca, and he became a significant figure due to his contributions to healthcare. So he was quite important. But even the two people mentioned on that sign, I mean, I'm, I should be reading it to, to tell you what it is. They seem to have been uh, prominent uh, wives over here. And that is my last spot. I know it's a bit random. And I know there'll be so many people going, you should have gone here, you should have gone there. And I had a list of about 40 to 50 places to go to today. And I was just trying to go, Ah, which ones do I see? And I reckon there was better places on that list that I've seen today. But hey ho, at least I've gone out of the tourist trap and I've seen a bit more of Singapore than uh, most tourists do. I've also seen a lot of chickens that have been randomly just walking around the roads. But I've enjoyed myself. It's been a really good day. It's been nice to get out of uh, the cluster of the, the tourist areas that just so many tourists are there going, wow, um, I've enjoyed it. It's been hard work climbing up all them hills. But I know there'll be some people that will want to comment on where I should have been. By the time this video comes out, I would have gone. So if you have got any ideas of where I should have gone, still put them in because hopefully other people coming to Singapore who want to go off the beaten track We'll have a look at the common school. I'll have a look. So yeah, just put them in, tell us where I should have been. Uh, maybe I'll come back, who knows? Um, but not for the next probably year because I still got to get all the way back to England. Now I'm gonna go back to the hostel. Uh, I, I've already said farewell on the previous video. I'm gonna say farewell again. This is my last night. Uh, I. Sh uh, I've, I've stayed, I said originally I was going to stay for two nights, in the end it's been five nights and tomorrow morning I am going, otherwise I'll end up living here and I, uh, uh, I don't think I can afford it. But yeah, so I'm off to Malaysia tomorrow morning and if you want to see that then all you've got to do is subscribe and if you've enjoyed this little tour of the uh, outback of Singapore then you've got to press that like button. But I'm off for Hawker's Centre's meal, just outside the hostel, and then start packing, and then have an early night. So until the next time, bye-bye for now.